So um, the first thing that you start with is this, uh, what's known as a Z-sphere. Um, and uh, this is the most basic kind of shape that ZBrush will produce. Um, and uh, basically, there's a lot of things that you can do with the Z-sphere. Um, but uh, we're going to start out with um, just some basic manipulations using these tools over here. Um, so uh, down here on the bottom left, we have a bunch of different sculpture tools, uh, which we will get into more in depth tomorrow. Um, but the different tools have different functionalities. Okay, so when you sculpt on the Z sphere, um, you will create, uh, you know, different uh, marks using the tool. And of course, pressure sensitivity will come into play. It's not coming into play here, um, mostly because I am working with my mouse as opposed to working with my pen tablet. Um, so uh, the draw tool will do that. Uh, the move tool will actually bring up this thing uh, It's called a gizmo. Uh, now the gizmo uh, is basically a way to manipulate your z-sphere or any kind of shape uh, in three dimensions. Um, now if you look at it, there are a couple of axes. We have <clears throat> the z-axis, we have the y-axis, and the x-axis. Okay, And they're represented by this blue, green, and red triangle uh, and square combo. Um, there's also this, you see this white ring that surrounds it and these white arrows. Um, those will actually um, move and scale the sphere as well. Uh, well, not scale the sphere, but it will move and uh, rotate the sphere. Um, so I'm going to make a mark on the sphere uh, just so we can know um, kind of where it's moving to. All right, so I got some marks here on the sphere. Um, so using the move tool, if I wanted to stretch my sphere, I would grab onto this little uh, green box here and you can stretch it. Um, and now if we move around in three dimensions, we can see it's kind of stretched like an egg shape. Um, if I wanted to stretch this direction, I could grab this um, red square and do that. Um, if I wanted to stretch the other direction, I could grab this blue square and do that. Um, if I wanted the whole thing to scale in proportion, I would basically, there's this yellow square here. Um, and the yellow square will scale it up and down in proportion. Um, now these triangles will move our sphere. And uh, if you have symmetry on, like I do, it'll move it and squish it. So symmetry gets turned on and off by hitting X. Um, so you basically can move this left and right. You can move it up and down. Uh, and you can move it backwards and forwards. Now I know I'd mentioned the, uh, the, the rotation tool. Um, that's so the, the ones that are colored here are going to move it on an axis of symmetry. So basically, um, if we move it here, it's just going to rotate cleanly. It's not going to get all kind of, it's not going to go in a weird direction. You know, if I rotate it using the blue widget, um, it's going to rotate it left and right. Uh, same thing with the red one forwards and backwards. Um, now, if at any point you want to return it to its original position, uh, basically you can just hit this home button. It'll take it back and then this will reset the orientation. Um, something else to note here is there, see this little face up here in the corner? The face will actually snap it to an axis of symmetry. So if you wanted to grab your tool and just kind of make it so it was like straight forward again, you could just grab this head and turn it forwards again. Um, so that's kind of covers movement or basic movement functions. Um, now this ring here is, I call it the free move ring, um, because if I grab this arrow, I can kind of move it any which way, but you see how we're no longer on the axis of symmetry. Um, and you can also rotate it, but it's going to rotate it where, whichever way your camera is facing. So if you turn your file and you rotate it using this white ring, it's going to rotate whichever way. So let's take it back to home and let's reorient. Bloop. All right. So now we're back to uh, the old straightforward thing here. Um, so that's movement. Um, you can actually do scale and rotate independently, but I just prefer to have all of it active at once so I can do whatever I want to it. Um, now that that's covered, we're going to cover these, these over here. So these are mostly to deal with view. Now, the tricky thing here is you have to actually drag on this tool after clicking down on it. So if I want to move my file around, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click move. Basically, what you would do is you would just press down with your pen on move. And once you've pressed down your pen, it's now going to move your file around. As you can see, my crosshair is moving away from that little box. But as long as I'm holding down, I'm in good, 
good uh, shape. The same thing with zoom. Only zoom only goes in and out. So if you go up or down while dragging your pen, it's going to zoom in and it's going to zoom out from your file. Um, rotate will rotate around your file, but you don't really need, that, need to do that because if you drag outside your file, you'll get a free rotation as well. If you hold down shift, it'll actually snap the axis as well. Um, frame, let's say we had, uh, we had taken our file and moved it way over here, and you're like, where is it? If you click frame, it'll bring it back into the frame. And then you can just zoom in and zoom out however you want. So that's the basic kind of move functions and things. Um, so now we're going to cover um, how to um, add different um, subtools. Now, think of subtools as layers in Krita. So when you're adding a new subtool, you're adding a new shape that you can manipulate without manipulating the other shapes around it. Okay, so um, let's say we wanted to add a few pieces onto this structure. Um, what we would do at this point is we would go to subtool, we'd click it, and it's going to bring down a menu that looks a lot like the layers menu. Um, and then we will come in here and we will go to append and then we'll very carefully drag because when you hit append sometimes and you, and you drag over too quickly, um, it'll like make the menu go away. So you may need to hit it a few times to get to do things. So, uh, let's, uh, let's start out with another sphere another Z sphere here. Um, so, uh, we'll click this. Um, and what will happen is, um, you guys don't see anything because it spawns the Z sphere right over the last one you had. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and click down to here, um, and now I can take this and move it away from my other file here, or my other subtool. Uh, I can resize it however I want it. Like, let's say we wanted to give this thing some, some kind of weird, like, arms or something. Um, I'm going to, you can move it into place. Um, you can, you know, obviously manipulate it any, any way you, you want. Um, and kind of place it in there. Um, now, don't worry about merging these subtools together quite yet. We'll cover that later. Um, right now we want to kind of leave everything separated. Um, so, uh, let's say I wanted to take this thing and I wanted to create another one on this side. Um, and this can, this technique can be used to do eyes for creatures. It can be used to, to do any number of things. Um, so you can basically, by duplicating the subtool, it's going to create another copy of it. Now you can, you can rotate it into place freely like this. Or, there's actually a really neat function down here in deformation that you can just bloop, mirror it onto the other side. Um, so deformation, while we're kind of talking about it, will, uh, will change the, uh, the nature of the, uh, the subtool that you're working with. Um, so let's say you wanted to work with this subtool here um, and you wanted to uh, deform it. Uh, you know, you wanted to give it a bend or something. Um, well... Let's see what's what's happening here. Like a twist, you could twist the subtool. Um, so these these menus will do that kind of thing. You can also uh, change a subtool by going into this um, this menu here. This is like a little gear, uh, and you can uh, you can do things like taper the subtool and do different manipulations to it using these these various drag handles. You can do all kinds of stuff. So you can kind of experiment with these these different functionalities to make different changes and things. Um, okay, um, so another really great way to make changes to your file um, is to use the move tool. Now, uh, oh, and if you ever, uh, if you do this, uh, that little gear menu, um, what you'll need to do is you'll need to do this and hit accept to finalize the transformation. It's just like hitting enter when you resize something. Um, so, uh, basically if you wanted to make some more subtle changes or more organic changes, I suggest the, uh, the move tool. Um, and the move tool is down here. It's like a, it's like a sculpture tool and you can use it on a big kind of, uh, oh, and up here we'll, we'll adjust your draw size. Um, and, uh, you can basically make big changes to your file by dragging out huge parts. And this will allow you to manipulate it, uh, quite a bit. Now, if you start making getting too funky, what you'll notice is uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the line fill here. Do you see how 
the mesh is kind of stretched out here, then that basically means if I were to come in here with uh, with like the clay build up tool, you see how it gets kind of weird as it goes out to the end there? Like it, it's kind of uglier and it's nicer looking down here where the mesh is tighter. Uh, basically what you can do <clears throat> is you can use something called the uh, DynaMesh. Um, and what DynaMesh does is it basically spreads out See the the thing is all is all kind of manipulated here. So what you can do is you can hit uh, you come down here um, and you go to geometry um, and you go to DynaMesh um, and you can change the resolution up to like two or three hundred. And then what you can do is you hit DynaMesh and what it does is it spreads the mesh out all along that balloon that you just made. Um, so now if I make a mark with my clay build up tool, it's consistent all the way down. So when you've manipulated a shape, it's always a good idea to come back and DynaMesh it. Now you don't always have to go to such a high resolution. You can always go to like 160 uh, and, and DynaMesh it. And you can see now you see the polygons are, are quite a bit larger. Um, so you're gonna have less smoothness to it, um, but that's okay if you're just making big changes. Um, something else you can do is you can actually take the DynaMesh and you can, you can reduce it really far down So now we've got it really, really big. And so what we can do at this point, we can use our move tool again to make big changes that don't really mess too much with like, because if you, if you pull out like, so this way we can make like big, big changes to our mesh. And then you come in, you up the resolution again, you hit DynaMesh again, and see now you could get in here and you could do uh, like fine sculpture again. And uh, at any point, if you want to smooth something out, you can just hold down shift and run over it and that'll smooth it and make it nice and nice and clean. Um, also with these basic sculpture tools, um, when you normally when you press down it's going to build but if you hold down alt it'll subtract and you can see the changes like the little icon changes to like a little minus sign okay so um, what we're going to focus on today um, is uh, trying to kind of generate ideas if you want to you can start by sketching your idea in Krita like as a basic kind of pencil sketch um, and then you can actually save it as a JPEG and you can have it there as a reference uh, for when you're working in ZBrush. Um, but uh, if you want to just go ahead and get started with adding sub tools and kind of playing around with that, you can. Um, by the end of the week, we should have our basic structure built out with like, don't worry about like detail or whatever, but we should have a structure built out with multiple sub tools by the end of the week. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.